Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and this is a troubleshooting video for our paper speaker project. You can find instructions to build one of these speakers linked in the description below this video, but sometimes you go through the entire build process, turn your speaker on, and don't hear any sound. It might not be immediately obvious just from looking at the speaker what's wrong, so this video will walk you through some common troubleshooting steps. The first thing you can check is not actually the speaker, but the device like your phone or your computer that you're using to play music. You'll want to make sure you are connected to the proper audio source. For example, if your device has internal speakers, or you've connected to a Bluetooth headset or Bluetooth speakers before, you should make sure you have the headphone jack selected as the sound source and not one of those other sources. You'll also want to make sure you have the sound volume on your device turned all the way up, and that the headphone cable is plugged firmly and all the way into the headphone jack. Next, we're going to zoom in on our spring connector. Now, this connector has plastic tabs. You can push down to press down on a little metal tab inside, which will hold a wire in place to allow you to quickly and easily make electrical connections. However, you have to be careful to make sure you are actually making the connections on both sides. So on one side, you have your headphone cable, which has three wires. You only need two of those. You need to choose the black wire, which is the ground wire, and then either the red or white wires, which have the left and right audio signals. Now you'll notice that these wires have some exposed metal at the ends, and then they have colored plastic insulation. So when you press one of these wires into the clip, you actually want to make sure you don't press it in too far, because if you go too far in, then the metal tab inside will be gripping the plastic insulation instead of the exposed metal of the wire. So you only want to push that in there just a little bit, just far enough so that when you release the plastic tab on top, it's gripping the metal of the wire and not the insulation. So if either one of those connections is broken, then your speaker will not work. So once you have your audio cable connected firmly, again, you just leave that third wire dangling off to the side that does not need to be connected. You need to check your magnet wires on the other side. Now in the assembly video, we show you how to strip the insulation off of these magnet wires with sandpaper. And that can be kind of difficult to see. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the video here, but once you have stripped insulation off, these should be a little shinier. The insulation itself has a slightly darker, less shiny color, and the parts with the insulation removed are a little lighter and shinier. So again, in this case, you wanna make sure these are in there such that the metal tab inside is making firm contact with the part of the wire that has had the insulation removed. However, if you strip a lot of insulation off the wire and go a little farther back, you do need to make sure that these two wires are not crossing or touching each other because that will create a short circuit and prevent your speaker from working. So again, make sure you've stripped enough insulation off that you can get electrical contact with both tabs inside the clips, but then make sure the wires are not bumping into each other further down the line. The final thing to check here is the speaker itself. The speaker works by vibrating up and down when the magnetic field from this wire coil interacts with the magnetic field from the permanent magnet on the base. So you will want to make sure that when you assembled the speaker, you didn't somehow gunk up the inside with glue and prevent it from moving at all. You will also want to make sure that the wire coil is just around the top of the magnet. If I lift this up a bit, you can see how tall the magnet is in there. If the wire coil is too far away, your speaker is not going to work. Magnetic fields rapidly get very weak with distance as you get farther away from the magnet. So you can adjust the height of the speaker by changing how stretched out or how creased these little folded accordion pieces on the side of the speaker are. So again, if your coil is all the way up here and you can see the top of the magnet that is too high up, you'll want to pinch these creases to fold them a little bit more and bend them down so your coil is right there around the top of the magnet. So that is not an exhaustive list, but it is a pretty good checklist of things to go through if you try this project and your speaker's not working. Once you've done all of that, you should be able to play music and hear it coming out of the speaker. Now, you may notice that the speaker is not extremely loud. It is not as loud as the type of speaker you could buy at a store and connect externally to your phone or your computer. So for example, if you're doing this in a crowded classroom and the kids are really excited and talking really loud, they might be loud enough that they're going to drown out the speaker. So you might have to ask everybody to be quiet, sit there quietly for a second, and then they'll be able to hear the music. But if you're working on this at home alone, the speaker should be loud enough that you can hear it even if you're sitting all the way across the room. So if you've tried this project and you got it to work, or if you're having trouble with it, please let us know on one of our various social media pages, which you can find linked in the description below this video. 
You can also check out our website, www.sciencebuddies.org, for thousands of other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects.